the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Holy Spirit is allowed to rest upon our lives rest upon our businesses Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man and then he said the power of the highest how shall it be that in one month I will shift levels in the spirit how shall it be that by the end of this year, I will look at my former self and not recognize it again. It says, the power of the highest shall rest upon you. So we are not here just for information alone. Elihu said there is a spirit in man. 32 and verse 8 of Job. It says the breath. And make men, any man, man of God, businessman, politician, any man of understanding. So whilst you're standing here, it is important for you to know that you are not standing just for others. You are standing believing the Lord you are able to shift. You are able to change. I am convinced that meetings are a total waste of time if the people do not change. Notably, notably. I made a vow with God that if I have to meet you twice to be blessed, I don't deserve to meet you. I should never meet a man twice to be blessed. So you are here in this place. And you are under a very intense anointing of the Spirit. It is that grace that quickens. It is that grace that makes alive. Listen. It is that grace that takes the veil from off your eyes. There is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned will have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 29 verse 11 please give it to us and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed not closed sealed it can be opened but it is still sealed the Bible says which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this I pray thee and he said I cannot why it is sealed I opened it but it is still sealed next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this I pray thee and he said I'm not even learned in the first place so there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned must sit down and trust the wisdom of this ancient one. Spirit of the living God, again we are here this morning. I pray that our eyes be open. Light of the world. You step down to my darkness, open my eyes, 
let me see that's the prayer start it again you're the light of the world you've stepped down into darkness pray now open my eyes let me see one more time please sing with me you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me Hallelujah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to Here I am to serve. You're all together. All together. All together. seated Micah chapter 4 Salabu sila hasiam baka supratasha skati brada baru siata leba skabadia You are rising said the spirit of the Lord I'm lifting you to new dimensions I'm lifting you I'm lifting you. This is what the Spirit of God is doing. The grace is lifting you. Lifting you new heights. New levels. I'm lifting you. This is what I hear the Spirit of God saying. Listen. Let me teach you something about prophecy. There are two dimensions to prophecy. There is the revelatory dimension of prophecy. The revelatory dimension of prophecy attempts to reveal to the end that your faith be built so you can receive it gives direction it strengthens your conviction but the highest level of prophecy is the creative dimension of prophecy where you make what has no business happening to happen when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway he made it happen Creation is the highest manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God, not from the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means he was not in any of them. And then the Bible says, verse 2, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. The Hebrew word, tohu wabohu. Chaos and confusion. Then the Bible says, and the Spirit of God, the master over darkness, hovered round the face of the deep. And then creation or recreation began to happen. There is absolutely nothing God cannot change. Listen, you have to find a way of believing in this conference that whilst you are seated, you are running. That whilst you are seated, you are flying. It is true. It's not just some motivation from a man of God. No, 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 no. It is his divine power that gives us all things. Our faith only connects us to his divine power. The real giver is his divine power. It is able to give us all things that pertains unto life and godliness, the Bible says. But it comes through knowledge. This is why we come to multiply the graces upon our lives through knowledge. Are we blessed? Micah chapter 4. Let's understand the cosmos. Let's deal with this system because this conference was so designed to supply spiritual intelligence. To bring us to a point where we thoroughly understand the system that we are living in. So that we can build an advantage to the end that the saints rise in light and to the end that the Christ be glorified. Never forget that the object behind everything we do is to see Christ revealed 
and to see Christ glorified there must be a space in my rising my lifting my advancement for the revelation and the glorification of the Christ are we together and the Bible tells us remember to be wise as serpents now he's teaching us how to live in the cosmos and he say you will need to borrow the philosophy of a serpent every time the bible uses the word serpent in scripture it always is linked to deception it's always linked to the devil but then most of the time but now he's saying when it has to do with living in the cosmos you will need to borrow the intelligence of the serpent are we blessed so Micah chapter 4 let's start let's see where God will help us it says but in the last days prophet Micah is speaking it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people although it is upwards will flow to it this is a very very serious description now the bible says listen mountains in scripture generally talk about spheres of influence they talk about systems and structures are we together now now the cosmos was built twofold number one there is the earth the physical territory and then number two there is the sociological system that is made up of men please understand this and i hope you understand that man was and is the zenith of god's creation the apex of his artistry the object of his his creativity is man and the story of man is a long story i cannot begin to start it here we'll spend the whole day discussing the story because most men do not know that they are in the middle of an ancient story it says there was war in heaven are we together now john the revelator by the spirit caught in the isle of patmos he began to document the things that he was seeing and he said once upon a time there was an old story in the heavenlies that there was war one who the bible identifies as satan once upon a time the son of the morning and then the bible says that there was war even in heaven and that he attempted treason satan did not want to dethrone god he wanted to run a parallel government so that you could choose God or him it is still his system today everywhere he sees God he comes as the other option he doesn't necessarily want to replace he wants to be an equal option you have to understand this are we together and so the Bible says because if you do not understand man then you will not understand the cosmos and dominion will be impossible you see this conference is 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 really a very strategic teaching I'm, I'm just trying to create the foundation for us to understand the prophecy of Micah and then deal with a few things and so the Bible tells us that there was rebellion in heaven and Satan was judged he contended with Archangel Michael and he could not prevail and a space was no longer found for him are we together now and then he was cast to the earth and there was a lamentation first there was joy in heaven but there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth that satan that old serpent so he's not young anything old must be respected old money old ideas old enemies anything old has the advantage of experience listen carefully we're dealing with the cosmos here it is not to put fear it's just it's just an information that he's called an old serpent he's been cast to the earth so he's lamenting and saying hey earth, beware this guy is a master of treason and he's come within your domain the next time we hear about that old serpent 
he found his way through the system of earth to sit upon this mountain he was cast from earth as a failure but he utilized his experience to collect the keys of dominion from adam and now began to build a system reflecting him remember earth was warned they said beware of this guy he's dangerous and the earth neglected that warning and by the time jesus comes satan says i have the keys look at the glory of the world whoever can fish himself through a system and become king there is a strategy there we must learn are you getting all that i've been saying so the bible says when you are wise be wise as serpents there is a secret of dominion a serpent has no hands and no legs yet you run away from it a serpent may not even run faster than you only one point of attack yet it is not threatened by any when a lion eats you see the evidence a serpent swallows and the digestion happens inside there are powerful you don't see serpents moving in twos I'm just giving you an idea. Please sit down. So this cosmos we are living in, listen carefully. The Bible says forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. It didn't say on earth. He told you the domain where the word of God has entered its Sabbath, heaven. But on earth there is still a contention. And one day, Revelations 11 and verse 15 will become a reality. That the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of we his Christ. And then the prophecy of Daniel becomes a reality that he will reign forever and ever. It's amazing that the book ends with the beginning of a new dispensation. Are we blessed but for now we are mandated having accepted christ the advantage of his life in our lives the bible tells us that we must now understand the cosmos that not everybody is born again that not everybody subscribes to your ideologies and that you must sustain the intelligence to be able to live in the cosmos still succeed and glorify the name of the christ are we blessed so this will take a system of mentorship supplying us the various dimensions of information Micah in the last days he's giving you an information that it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and that action will be so attractive the Bible says people shall flow to it verse 2 it says they shall say unto one another come let us go up to the it started as the house of god the mountain of god now it says the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us this will be the advantage of that mountain they are privy to information that make for dominion come and show us the secrets he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 prophet Isaiah is buttressing on these revelations verse 1 he starts by saying arise Isaiah 60 and verse 1 he says shine and he tells you why he says for thy light is come not your light is around just like faith light comet it can come to you the light has always been there but until it comes to you you cannot arise you don't arise because you are tired of sitting you arise because your light is come and then the bible says the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified puts it in a very interesting way he says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light rise 
the glory of the lord is risen upon you the next verse says for darkness now this is a pro this is this is very prophetic the bible is giving us an insider information so that we are not surprised it says a time will come in the age of of the church and in the dealings here in the cosmos that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you oh i receive verse three hallelujah it says gentiles now here it is a time will come we'll stop looking for them there is a system that will be at work in us that will compel gentiles to come to thy light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of thy rising hallelujah praise the lord this is very very powerful darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but upon you there is an advantage the advantage is light and that that light will one day compel the nations to come and see and acknowledge and when sheba came to solomon she did not come empty she came with gifts even though he was blessed because whoever possesses that light cannot be ignored within the context of a generation it is impossible neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel if the lamp is not lit no problem you can throw it anywhere but provided there is light it is impossible to hide light Put a cloth upon light you will still know there is light hide it in darkness you will still know there is light light cannot be hidden when jesus came teaching in his beatitudes he still began to teach and he said you are the light of the cosmos that means the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world you are akin to a city that is set on a hill it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel then it says you are the salt of the earth you are not the salt of the world you are the salt of the earth the powerful thing about salt is you can put it in food anytime there are ingredients that if you, if you put it late you've messed up the whole meal but even when the food is done and it's tasteless you can still do something about it Are we blessed we are called light we are called salt now let's let's deal with let's deal with these things when I, I gave us the illustration yesterday when Jesus took Satan up the mountain and showed him the glories of this world that means the glories of this world are hidden in the mountains are we together now let me begin to deal with Micah's prophecy there is a location where you find the glories of the world the word glory is the Hebrew word um, kabod. Am I right? The Greek is doxa. And the original expression is the weightiness of a thing. It's an attempt to measure the worth of a thing. So that when you want to know the worth of earth, when you want to know the riches, the vastness of the earth, it tells you the location that the glories are residing within the mountains. Are we together now the glory the riches the influence now let me say one more thing before i begin to teach the gospel please look up the bible ties what we know to be the coming the end of the age you know rumors of wars and so on and so forth and um i may not argue with the fact that you know people teach that there are signs of the end times and the bible does recognize these things as signs but there is only one ultimate sign of the end time that the bible teaches us it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the earth and then the end will come all of the things we call signs are beginnings of birth pains the bible says 
there is only one sign that the moment you see that the teaching of the kingdom the influence of the government of heaven begins to permeate systems and structures get ready because the dominion of the saints is about to be revealed and christ is coming as the king of we kings he's not coming for a weak church he's coming for a bride that is adorned are we are we together now these are very vital informations that must be it must be at the back of your mind as we explore dealing with the cosmos if not you will be distracted these are the things that peg your success and keep you at the level of balance because success without these understandings will distract you you will veer off there are too many options when you are blessed so this this information creates the coordinates so that the things that destroy others do not destroy you the bible says even fools can prosper the only advantage is that their prosperity will or their disadvantage is that their prosperity will destroy them and a fool is one who says in his heart there is no god that means he acts as though there is no god are we blessed we have to understand the system so the glories are hidden within the mountains whoever wants to access the glory of the earth must sustain the intelligence to ascend those mountains and find a space there now listen very carefully these mountains please can I have seven people just seven gentlemen just come stand here the mountains are called mind control systems please write them down please just stand at my, it's not an impartation oh dear just, just please just stand you know every time I call for people like this they run they think I'm going to lay hands seven of you are there seven okay thank you thank you now watch this watch this South Africa please watch this the Bible lets us know that the glories of the earth are hidden in the mountains. Are you following my, my discourse now? That means if I can find, and I told you mountains represent systems and structures of influence. In fact, um, let me digress a bit and talk about the gospel. The word gospel means good news, tidings that bring joy. Are we together? Now, the Bible teaches us that there are two dimensions to the gospel. Please say two dimensions one more time say two dimensions there is the gospel as a message that saves that's the first dimension and sadly the only dimension that most of the church knows there is the gospel as a message what is the content of that message a revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son targeted towards that object of his love called man and then by extension creation to the end that believing that report we will have the life of God what John calls the way do you agree that is the message of the gospel but there is the ideology of the gospel now this is the dimension that the church is ignorant of there is the gospel as a message and there is the gospel as a mind control system there is the gospel as an ideology the ideology of the gospel is the ideology that seeks to see and make christ enthroned all across the cosmos it is the ideology if all you have is the message of the gospel you are saved but you are not safe because your territory the 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 message affects you alone it is the ideology that affects your cosmos please follow me we're dealing with something very serious here i have believed that message it profits me alone but there is something the ideology can do to my mind that is what will bring the cosmos under the influence of the christ one more concept i defined and then we'll begin to teach on this am i wasting your time let's talk about kingdom advancement i love you too thank you kingdom advance listen there is such a concept called kingdom advancement and i must teach you what it is what is kingdom advancement if you want to write please write this down kingdom advance is 
the deploying of every and any scriptural strategy the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that enthrones Christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance I repeat the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that leads to the enthroning of the Christ first across the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activity South Africa please look at me it is not difficult to see Christ glorified if you understand this so when you say you are advancing the kingdom this is what you are saying I am an active contributor to seeing that the Lordship of the Christ be enthroned first in the hearts of men that's called evangelism second across the strata of human activities that's called influence so the key to kingdom advance is both evangelism and influence please see after me evangelism and then say influence for many years the church in africa and we are well-meaning people sincerely we have embraced evangelism and so we we are concerned with the the establishment of the lordship of the christ across the hearts of men and so we have sincere people morally sound they love god but the system is still under the control of a government that continues to frustrate and sabotage the progress of the church and so it, the remedy is a correct understanding of the gospel of the kingdom that it will take both evangelism and influence in that order not influence before evangelism no christ must be enthroned in our hearts then enthroned in our territory are we blessed are you following me now so kingdom advance and let me tell you this because i'm about to explain to us what we call purpose and explain to us what we call assignment or destiny we've complicated it with several teachings there is absolutely nothing complicated about purpose or assignment your purpose and assignment is simply the role you have to play in that universal agenda called kingdom advance we have been distributed roles to play and when you find your role the geography of your dominion the geography of your witness is called your assignment are we blessed so if all i have is jesus in my heart i am happy but my children are in trouble your territory is in trouble someone will sign a policy one day that will completely sabotage everything you have built for kingdom come it was because joseph had access to the king that god's covenant people were saved jacob was a prophet but they would have still died it took a man of influence you've heard me say it for those of you who listen to my teachings the body of jesus is hanging on a tree and no prayer warrior could bring it down it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea who had access to government to negotiate the body of the christ to come down he owned an estate that we called a tomb and that was where the body was dropped for your salvation look at the forces that played their roles don't just look at the cross alone the grave too played a role the tomb played a role otherwise we will not be able to say oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory so ministry therefore is not just preaching it's not just teaching you begin to minister the day you find your place in this agenda The fivefold or fourfold, as we argue, really speaking, are not ministers. They are the gifts that prepare the ministers. 
the bible says he gave gifts unto men ephesians 4 the gifts are not talents the gifts are men to men he gave men called gifts to men and the assignment of those gifts the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers it says for the perfecting the maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured by those gifts will do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry seeing to it that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ i will tell you why many people pray god bless me god lift me and they never seem to see certain levels of territorial blessings it's not because you cannot buy and sell it's because god has not found a space in your understanding that accommodates his agenda please listen to me the Bible says, withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power. So when it looks like God is withdrawing, it's an act of his mercy. Because that barrenness in understanding will affect you when you are blessed with certain resources and influence. The only thing that gives it value is this knowledge. So you sit in a position where with one signature you can help a thousand believers. But because you do not have this understanding, you don't know what to do with this vast influence. And Satan will come to suggest and tell you there is a way. Influence is useless when understanding is unfruitful. Let's define influence. We know what evangelism is. Let me give you my definition of influence. Influence, as I define it, is the ability to make men buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty. The compelling power that makes men to buy into your convictions. You force them to believe what you believe without using cruelty influence now if you this is a dangerous message for the kingdom of darkness believe me this is it that's the secret influence if i can make a territory buy into my ideology which is a reflection of the ideology of the kingdom then in one day a nation can be saved now watch this influence is very powerful because at every point it, they define civilization they define right and wrong they define their mind control systems let's go back to micah's prophecy you see how difficult it is to walk this thing micah says it shall come to pass in the last days that the influence of the church will begin to rise now you understand what he's saying the influence something will happen to that weak church that looks like the rejected stone and he says the influence like a seed that has been thrown to the earth suddenly it will look like the church is playing but you will see it in ever increasing measures and that a day will come listen now that people will begin to note and say look these guys are a force we cannot ignore And as a result, Gentiles will come. That's influence. It's one thing to call them, come see a man. But it's another thing for them to come. He says, shall you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? Joseph said, oh king, find a man who is discreet and wise. And the king said, who shall we find? Listen. If you understand what I share with you today, you will step into dimensions. You see, the value of the anointing is that it comes upon the container of your understanding. The true potential of the anointing is seen when your understanding is fruitful. Are we, are we blessed now? Now, let's deal with this thing. We know, sociologically speaking, that this cosmos, this earth, popular concept that we all understand in the body of christ there are what we know to be seven mountains are we together but then let me share with you something powerful about them seven mountains that control the entire activities of the human race 
to date. The entire earth in terms of influence can be broken into seven mountains. <sighs> Should I say what I want to say? Yes. Will you believe it? Yes. Okay. Now, man is not tripartite. Just, just listen. Just absorb it and, and just listen carefully. There is no such concept as spirit stand here, soul stand here, body stand here. Th that is nonsense. Watch this. Listen. I understand what people who purport this are trying to say. Man is spirit. But because of the law of territory that any spirit that must function in the earth realm must sustain a material body made of the materials of that territory. It's called the law of territory. That's why we cannot live in the water indefinitely. Why? Because there is something about that, that ecosystem are we together that we were not built for. You fly but you don't live in the air. If you fly excessively, you have something called a jet lag. It's a reminder that you were not designed to live on the air. Are we together now? Now, <laughs> please listen to me. Man is spirit. But a body had to be built for that spirit. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? The body hosts the spirit. But there was a problem. So here is spirit. Here is body. There's no system of relating. Because they come from two different realms. Are we together? So a medium was created. That allows the duality of realms. So that that entity can still relate with the realm he came from. And still be effective in this realm. Hold on. The name of that connector is called the mind. The mind is a medium. That's where we get the word media. Ah. So the assignment of the media is to connect intentions with experience. Pray in the spirit for one minute. We, we have to ask God to help us this morning. <laughs> Ashubrati salato jabragaduzia na hasapandusia skadabrande gabaruzia ta mande to salida duzia ta. We want to work something seriously in this place. Shege pasku baharando skela paduzia ta. The gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Now, so you understand my teaching. The mind is the faculty that gives the intention of the spirit expression in the earth realm the body is merely an executor it does not have a will of its own that's why when you separate the spirit from the body we name that experience death not the cessation of life but now you have separated them and that body lies down there now this is very powerful so when you say this man is a pastor now if this man god forbid falls to the ground and dies you don't call the dead body a pastor so who was really the pastor are we together our society is shaped by these fears of influence. Seven of them. Let me name them quickly. We have to save time. Please write. This is very important. Number one. There are concepts that are popular. So I will use them and just, just, just walk around them. The first fear of influence. Call them mountains now. It's called the mountain of religion. Write it down please. This is the sphere that decides the spiritual conviction of a people within a territory. That means that any territory, you can know the quality of what is happening in this mountain 
by the spiritual convictions of the people within a territory if there is a prevalent error within a territory this is the mountain to blame someone is not doing his job well and is, is by so doing altering the convictions of the people wrongly are we together so when God calls you as a man of God this is the geography of your witness religion are we blessed let me tell you this watch this everybody believes in something don't mind the ignorance of people when they say I don't believe in anything not not believing in anything means you believe in yourself Nebuchadnezzar put an idol of himself so he believed in himself when you believe in yourself as as against believing in God is still idolatry you should believe in yourself when you are motivating people but you can build an image of yourself and worship it you are still an idol worshiper it's just that you are worshiping yourself are we blessed the mountain of religion watch this if God is going to invade a land and birth dimensions of his grace and glory this is where he will come from when he was about to come to the earth he went to the priest Zechariah he didn't go to the scribes he didn't go to the learned people he went here and said Zechariah something is about to happen John is coming he will have to forerun the coming of Jesus John wanted to mess him up Zechariah and he shut his mouth Zechariah became deaf and dumb not because God hated him he wanted to use priesthood to abort destiny and God said no we have to do something this man has an anointing upon him and if he speaks he will affect the climate he has dominion over the cosmos remember Zechariah was the priest that was in charge of priesthood for that year so heaven recognized that office there was a throne that backed that office and God said let's help men by shutting this man's mouth so sometimes shutting your mouth is not wickedness is to be sure that what you are saying is right God may temporarily withdraw your influence and vet what you are about to communicate the content of your message when he finds it right, the tulip gates are open for you. Then the nations can now hear you. Are we blessed? Religion. Number two. The mountain of family. This is a very serious mountain. Every arm robber comes from a home. Hello? Every thief was born every troublemaker that harasses society was born every terrorist was born every apostle and great general was born family is very important this is the first revelation of the love of jesus family the bible begins with family and ends with family the most honorable name that god gives himself is father not even just lord abba he says when you pray to me i have many names but this is my most preferred name abba father abba does not mean one who has a child no you don't have to have a child to be father father means source sustainer defender when you call me abba you acknowledge that every other thing aside from me is only a channel I am the source somebody say my father the mountain of family we have to save marriages we have to save children most of the nonsense that happens in society starts here when a child does not experience love from the home he ships his anger to anywhere he finds himself and his entire lifetime will be spent on a revenge mission and if you happen to be the victim of his revenge then he can make your life miserable that person can become a politician tomorrow and hate people unnecessarily because subconsciously the anger from that background please don't say it does not matter some of the happiest people on earth today are either people who are sociologically speaking people who come from good families 
I hope you know that a man and a woman are two dimensions of God. He separated them so that God will use marriage to help men understand him. The, the primary, listen, the primary assignment of marriage is not just for having children. A woman is a dimension of God. A man is a dimension of God. That separation was made so that man will understand the highest revelation of God in intimacy. That is the reason why the Holy Ghost is also called what the woman is called, helper. You, you see that? Yes. That means that you understand him when you understand women. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. Ladies, you will make lunch for me this afternoon. I mean, watch this. Now, please sit down. Let me tell you this. Now, now truly speaking, I know we're laughing, but, but just, just pay attention. Listen. The mountain of family is very powerful. The first sermon a child should have about God should come from the relationship between father, mother, daddy, mommy, not pastor. The first education of the child should not come from school. should come right here. And the way the Bible says is to train up a child. Hold on. How does a train move? Hold me. Do as I do. Don't just listen to me. This is how children are trained. Don't, don't, don't ask me to go and buy you a cigarette and when I bring it, you now tell me if I catch you smoking, I will kill you. No, no, no. Children are not good listeners, but they are good imitators. Let me teach you how to train your child. You are saying, son, I want to show you about kingdom finances. This is my own money this is your own right this you are teaching your child now and you're saying now watch me father thank you one day that child will kneel down with you you don't have to invite the child just do it sincerely and consistently and that child will come to you one day you will drive him you will not go because you have become an influence one day when he's alone and you travel the spirit of god will come you can the child can pray you can be praying around the house every night and laying hands on your children your wife and then one day your son will follow you too you'll say boy go and sleep and he will cry he's becoming a man of the spirit by following a man of the spirit listen when this place is correct it will reduce the work of pastors it will reduce the nuisance that all kinds of trouble and nonsense that men of God go through. What about teachers? The home, a place that should help, a place that should build. This is where you can look and say, look, son, you are handsome. Daughter, you are beautiful and I love you. And she comes back and says, daddy, Someone told me I'm not beautiful. Say, don't mind that, that blind gentleman. I've, I'm, I'm your father and I know, let me show you from scripture. So that even when I'm not around, that conviction remains true. Because if I just tell you the day I'm not there, you will look for me everywhere. But I need to, I will start, but I will direct you to the word that can outlive me. Listen, I don't want to dwell here. Valentine is over already. But watch this every man is threefold when you are speaking about family every man is a husband defines his relationship exclusively to his wife every man is father defines the jurisdiction of his responsibility every man is priest when you find a man that is not these three things run away there's no need saying god is he your will i'm answering you now run fast You don't have to be father when you have children. The apex of fatherhood is responsibility. Then every woman is a wife. 
A wife is not one who is married. Bible says he that finds a wife, meaning she has to be a wife before she's found. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Listen. A wife is a posture. It's a state. There is an understanding you sustain that makes you a wife. It has nothing to do with a man coming around you. Now, listen, please. And then every woman is a mother. The hallmark of motherhood is sacrifice. Any woman that has not yet sustained the fortitude for sacrifice is not a mother, even if you have children. And then like the man, every woman is also priest. Or every woman is a priest. when a proverbs 31 woman meets with a job 29 man they will make a psalm 112 home let's stop here family everybody say family number three the third mountain is education. This is a very serious mountain because your concepts and ideas about life are foundationally built from here. It matters the quality of our institutions. You need to know what your child is hearing when you are not there. Don't say it does not matter. Children return back and ask parents questions they cannot sleep. Daddy, what is this? And he says, how old are you? Daddy, I'm seven. Who taught you? No, they didn't teach me. I saw my teacher saying it or doing it. We must trust God for the grace and the resources to build schools that are run by the value system of the kingdom. Before the school resumes, the teachers do a vigil. Shalika Paruskiata. They lay hands on the report cards of the children. This is what we are talking about. That while the teacher is teaching, suddenly there is a student with all kinds of oppressions coming from a family. And the teacher does not say you are lazy and dull because the teacher is also a priest. And the teacher says, young lady, see me in my office. I have noticed you don't do well. And she says, it's not my fault. And says let me show you how it works in the kingdom there is a spirit in man now please don't think i'm just entertaining you whether you are interested or not god is up already doing it <laughs> our schools where we teach our children values of honor diligence respect have you noticed how our teenagers resent god if we uh, i want to say it respectfully i love the body of christ i'm sent to the body but this where you family this right here was the mistake of the west when mighty things were happening in the 60s and the 70s some of our mothers and our fathers who continue to do great things around they ignored the children notice in the exodus of israel a, a negotiation came let the men go but leave and later it's okay let your children your children is your future you see why the miracle of that woman whose husband was a prophet and died the debtors what did they want to do with the children you are not successful if you are the only one who is successful until your children reflect your values you have failed believe me when i tell you this our teenagers you off the television they switch it on when people watch movies or television and they say it's rated 18 all that is just to make sure the law doesn't harass you but most people know where to find everything something is going seriously wrong otherwise one day like most teenagers 
and young people don't know what a typewriter is someone is going to say who is jesus say my jesus i don't know him what what do you mean your he's your jesus not our jesus say jesus i don't know him he's strange and there rose another pharaoh who knew not joseph but in the name of jesus there are people here who will be sent to this mountain to be the preservers of the heritage of knowledge with God involved. There were two trees in Eden. One was the tree that ministered life. The other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the Babylonian system. One of the most painful things for a parent is that after laboring for years, you watch your child become a complete opposite of your ideology. When you say Jesus, he says nonsense. When you say moral excellence, he says rubbish. When you say responsibility, he says, what does that mean? We will lose a generation if we ignore education. There are people today who can, I know it happens a lot in Africa, People just buy results. People just buy all kinds of things and they have absolutely nothing to deliver. They bribe their way from high school, primary school we call it, college and all through and there is absolutely nothing to deliver. This is a mountain. I'm showing you so that I will verify what you saw in your dream. The unusual passion for education is not carnality. Because we think spirituality is when you become a man of God on the pulpit. I'm showing you now that this is also a minister. So when you find out that the prophet who is called into the prophetic ministry is having an unusual urge to pray. He's praying 16 hours. It's because of the design of his call. You find yourself having an excessive appetite for knowledge and books. You have now feel bad because that man has defined his spiritual life as the template to measure spirituality. No, stay on your course with honor. You are growing to it. Is God blessing us? The next mountain, very quickly, number four, arts and entertainment. This is very powerful. This is the mountain that teaches us how to celebrate success. This is the mountain that shows us the end of where we want to go to. This is the mountain that provides inspiration through the results of others. When you watch a footballer or you watch a football team lift the trophy, you can sit back there and just imagine yourself inside a jersey and say, look, I'm coming to. This mountain inspires in no small way, but it is also dangerous because they can teach you to celebrate success in a way that extracts Christ out of the equation. Musicians, this is the mountain of celebrities and there's nothing wrong being a celebrity provided Christ will be represented there. That's why I told you, you need God before you get here. The pressure here is serious. Ask any man who has tasted of honor and influence and they will tell you it's not as easy as we say. I will say no to everybody. Well, obtain grace. Eat because the journey is far. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Imagine if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus. He will save more souls than many crusades combined. Not because he believed what he said, but just because he said it from a standpoint of influence. You see the reason why every time Jesus met celebrities, he did not ignore them. He knew they had power. He knew they had influence. Influence right here is powerful this is a place that shows you the the excellency of being valuable this is where value is celebrated if you are not valuable this is the schoolmaster that will teach you a lesson this is where the spotlight resides it will inspire you to be creative it will inspire you to be valuable and let me tell you there are people 
your assignment requires you being a celebrity it is not from a carnal standpoint so while you are becoming that award-winning tv hostess and that musician people think you are just no you are still a priest in disguise it's like a terrorist group you are a doctor but you are a terrorist you are a celebrity but at the back of it you are a dangerous prophet so people just know that you are the tv hostess and people love you you are piling awards and when the kings come to your house and say how do you do it you look at them and you tell them listen a man can receive nothing do you think they will listen to you absolutely they will if results were cheap everyone will have it results are loudspeakers is God helping us I have to rush so you must trust God and we're going to pray and in this conference there will be graces released upon people listen I made up my mind that I would never lead a people who are just spiritual alone there must be people who by the grace of God will be gatekeepers of strategic spaces of influence right here the next mountain this one is one that you should respect it's called the mountain of media comes from the word medium they are real mediators they create imagery they define your convictions you only know what you are told genesis 3 and the lord had the the, the bible says and adam had the voice of god walking in the cool of the day and when he met adam look at me he said adam where art thou and adam said i heard your voice and i hid because i was naked next question who told you you have you have outsourced an information from a media that is not me the media is powerful where is media you mind control systems that's why advertisement they spend billions of dollars please talk to me your business people many of you the advertising industry for two minutes during olympic or world cup or any of the football international football or whatever it is for two minutes people pay millions of dollars do you know why because the media someone may want you to now begin to buy this water and then they call a celebrity to drink it and then he drinks it in a way a manner that makes you hate the one you now have in your fridge now you don't know that that hatred has been planted till you go to drink it you look at it and say no no i shouldn't i media there is something they can do to god here that will make you hate god there is something they can do to church here that will make you hate church there is something they can tell you from here that will make you hate the bible it is within their power to paint any picture the media is powerful the media can make you in five minutes to hate your wife by telling you a story and it will paint it in a way these people are masters of psychology you look at your wife and say from today we don't stay in the same room again say well, honey we've been married for 20 years sir. but someone can hijack this media and make a man who was about to run away from his wife come back and say honey you know what after 20 years it still looks like yesterday the media mind control systems hmm. please understand what i tell you africa this is what has destroyed us somebody told us something that we are weak somebody told us something that we are not strong somebody told us something now i love the body of christ but listen to what i tell you be careful what you hear i heard of a story a real story of someone who was trying to climb achieve an impossible feat 
he was climbing a very tall palm tree and when he started climbing people were stopping him and say hey don't climb you will fall down and the man kept climbing he was looking at them they were clapping their hands and saying no and he was laughing at them and he kept climbing and at a point they kept quiet when he arrived there they were all clapping and they found out that the man was deaf so his interpretation of their criticizing him was an applause there was a media system that sponsored his growth if that man were not deaf he would never attain that height someone told you you are not beautiful that you will need to turn stones to be bred to be approved whereas he already said you are the beloved son someone told you we are victims of what we were told but the bible says let this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 be in you which was also in christ jesus there is a mentality ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 he says having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them when god wants to save a man he will introduce you to media the greatest this a compendium of the thoughts of god we call it the word of god the logos of god Please look at me he says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise even unto salvation this is it i found your word and i did eat it it became a joy and a rejoicing this is the media that changed my life vetoed my background hmm. i guarantee you expose yourself to this my son he says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart he says they are life not to everybody to those who find them and health to their flesh when God wants to motivate you he will bring a screen before you you can call it a vision you can call it a dream he shows you tomorrow while you are not yet there so that all the vicissitudes of life that frustrate you in your today suddenly there is a media that flashes you joseph do not mind the pit it is the throne you saw when joseph was in the pit even in the pit he remembered i saw the sun i saw the moon i saw 11 stars capacity please culture what you listen to Please culture what you hear. There is a generation depending on your transformation. I am ever aware that everything I expose myself to endangers a generation or blesses that generation. And for the sake of that generation, since God has brought me to a point where my words are received by a generation, I owe that generation the purity of spiritual communication. And so I discipline myself. Why? Because the content that we feed our generation will make them. Do you like what I'm teaching? Isn't it amazing that we've not even talked about money? And yet this is how to be rich. You make money of understanding. These are the systems that coordinate your understanding. Then you will lay up wealth, gold as dust. The mountain, are we still there? This mountain is important. The mountain of politics and governance. Watch this. Please look at me. The mountain of politics and governance. South Africa, look at me. Africa, hear me. It was Daniel in Babylon that taught us the excellency of finding God's advocates in government. Daniel is a very interesting personality. He came as a slave 
and then the bible says by the excellency of the spirit of god at work in him he was exalted to positions that gave him the ability to represent the purposes of god daniel begins to pray and because of his prayer the controlling power of the persians the spirits around medopersia that was manipulating the activities within that sociological sphere could not work because an advocate was in government and a house of parliament came together by the influence of spirits but they used laws to express those influence and said for 30 days king nebuchadnezzar let us pass a law they didn't say we want to attack daniel they said let us pass a law no one imagine what happens to a territory for 30 days when men don't pray a law for only 30 days and they came to catch daniel and could not find anything at all except as touching the matter of his god now watch this Daniel opened the gate and continued to pray as his custom was. And the Bible says one time they came and caught him. When they caught Daniel, now Daniel is supposed to be in trouble. Hallelujah. And because of the excellent spirit, even the king was touched. Daniel, why did you do this? You would have just obeyed the law. They throw Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel shows them, I'm not only a member of parliament. There is something about me you do not know. You threw a member of parliament, but now watch a kingdom citizen. Many people focus on the lion. They forget Daniel. He was not passing any law there. He was showing them the excellency of the graces that were upon him. Hey, when I wear that suit, do not make a mistake. I'm not only passing laws. I am an advocate. I stand to promote the interests of a government. And let me speak to someone here. May the grace that makes for government rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm prophesying to people here who have had dreams. You know you are to be in the parliament in South Africa. Don't let no man keep you down. It may take time, but climb that ladder with grace and intelligence. And you sit there and represent the interest of the Christ. Listen now. one policy can shut the interest of god within a territory not two not three i can be as anointed as i am but if one law is passed with all the anointing with all the prophecies with all the miracle grace one policy but there has to be someone there who will sit down and you look at yourselves there it doesn't matter what party you know that all those things are just mediums for expression and you stand what is this decision about and you go back to the holy ghost and you come back okay i found the idea do a b c and heaven says thank you you have preserved the next 30 years of south africa just by being a correct parliamentarian please pay attention to government it matters christ must be represented here this is where jezebel sits when jezebel comes she wants government she wants to marry whoever is the king jezebel is an interesting wife she doesn't just marry any man are you a king no i'm not interested in you where are you herod where are you ahab jezebel marries the kings so that she can use the throne to fight elijah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray!
pray pray for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 